Hello, how are you guys doing? I hope you're doing all right. Um, so I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the accordion book project. So this last project, it can really be a cumulative project if you want it to be, in which you can pull from like lino cut techniques or holograph or monotype prep techniques and pull them into your process as a form of collage if you would like. As long as you incorporate some uh, collage and some painting, then you can incorporate whatever materials you want. You can even work digitally and then print aspects out and work them in through collage. So making an accordion book is pretty easy and that's one reason why I really like the style of book binding. Um, so in this next clip, I will show you how to make an accordion book or actually make the physical object that you can then decorate with your supplies. So here I'm demonstrating on how to make an accordion book out of a sheet of paper that I've already done some painting on. So you may not approach it in this way. You may want to do some painting before you fold it and cut it into your accordion book. Or maybe you just want to work with a blank sheet of watercolor paper and do all of your painting afterwards. The key to folding an accordion book is having a long rectangle and then folding it in half. I then take each of those halves and fold those in half. It's totally up to you what size or format your accordion book is in. Um, here I demonstrate using some gloss medium as adhesive to attach two accordion books together to make a very long one. If your book doesn't feel or look like an accordion, I recommend just trying to fold the pages back in different directions. Okay, so it's pretty easy. You can really um, just take any paper. I really like watercolor paper because you can actually paint on it. Um, but some accordion books I have only used one sheet of paper. So this accordion book, I took um, just one sort of long rectangle and I cut it in half horizontally. You always want it to be relatively long and rectangular in order to make the shape nicely. It's just a nice shape. You can like put these in your back pocket or your purse and just sort of like have a sketchbook on you that weighs nothing and you know is a nice little artist book. So in some of these I, I planned them out a little bit more or I kind of like had some sketches I was working on um, but for some of these, I really just sort of laid down washes of color or really thin layers of paint and then went through and sort of found form in the abstraction that I first created. So this is an option that I give you guys, um, in the sketchbook assignment in which you can really kind of think about, um, this process in a really intuitive way, if you would like. So it's almost similar to um, that automatic writing that I had you guys do for the sketchbook assignment. Um, and automatic painting or drawing are also sort of these techniques that the surrealists would use in order to get in touch with the more unconscious parts of their brain. So by sort of um, letting your hand move with a, paint, with a paintbrush, a wet paintbrush full of water and color, sort of just moving through the space you can then look into that abstraction and find a lot of interesting narrative, sort of imaginative um, sections of it. But here I started with sort of like these big areas of red and orange and light green. And I worked with them as washes. So adding a bit of water to them. You can also add a bit of like your medium to it. And that'll help make a really lovely, um, Thinner, thinned out version of your color that'll be nice and shiny. And it also retains a lot of the texture, which is nice. But basically I went through and added some of these smaller details after I did my first layer. So I thought generally about the entire composition first, and then I went through and sort of honed in on each page. So you can approach this sort of like a comic book artist or graphic novelist in which you're really working from one page to the next in a very narrative, linear narrative sense. Or you can work on them more like, you know, like this is one painting 
but then within it, you can hone in on different pages as you flip through it. So here I've used some um, acrylic paint, some gouache, um, and some Caran d'Ache crayon, which is basically like a wax pastel, basically like the fancy version of crayons. But one thing that I find really important as far as getting my color relationships down is working with complementary tones. And that's why I had you guys get two complementary colors and white, because with two complementary tones, you both have two colors that really vibrate when they're next to each other and create a really intense reaction to your viewer's sort of visual system. But they also will, when mixed together, will cancel each other out. So because of this, you don't have to buy any black paint because you can make your own deep, dark color by mixing your two complementary tones together. Um, so like for instance here, um, this is actually a paint marker, but I could have made a color that rich by adding a bit of the complement. So maybe taking a phthalo blue and adding in some um, deep red to it. But um, one thing I find really important in my work is thinking about complementary neutral relationships. So this light blue, it's almost like the exact complement to this sort of like slightly neutraled out orange behind it. So I also wanted to show you guys this one I made. Um, so in this one, I'm still working with complementary relationships, but I'm also bringing in some additional tones here and there. So if you want to have a more various color scheme, so maybe you want to take your, compl your complementary colors, mix them together to make a black, add some white to make some different kinds of grays, and also using the colors to dull each other out in different ways, but you might want to bring in a second color. So in order to do that, I would either use your printing ink to incorporate some kind of print, um, or if you have any like watercolor gouache you would like to use, you're more than welcome to incorporate that as well. Um, you can also collage in images that contain the colors that you need in the painting. So um, these, for the most part, are painting and drawing based, um, but there's really endless ways to do it. And another thing that I want to show you guys and that I, that I explained in one of the videos is this idea of glazing. So glazing is like my favorite painting trick out there. And basically it's using um, a transparent color or a transparent pigment and using it to overlap on top of other opaque things that are happening in the painting, um, which will create really, really beautiful um, moments of color that will shift based on what's on top of it. So this was a technique used by a lot of the sort of like classic Renaissance painters in order to achieve kind of like this glowing um, color. But notice how this was just white underneath here and painting this really, really transparent or orange on top. Um, I love that it showed what's behind it and it created this beautiful vibrant orange by layering that sort of like Indian yellow color on top of my um, mostly, I think this is like a quinacridone magenta. Um, but I really recommend layering transparent colors on top of one another in order to just experiment with color and what you can do with it. So I imagine if you're painting like a portrait, being able to go in with sort of different layers on top of just an opaque underpainting would make an incredible um, figurative piece. But there's like millions of ways that you can take this project. Um, as long as you're using the format of an accordion book and you're sort of exploring some of those things in your sketchbook, um, you can sort of change your mind halfway through the project and sort of make it into something new. I want you to follow the creative process wherever it takes you um, and don't feel too constrained. Um, but I, I really recommend whenever you're painting anything, um, you're going to start with the biggest brush that you have. You're going to work on the whole thing. Then you're going to slowly switch your brush to become smaller and smaller so that the tiniest details, like these very, very tiny parts here, are going to be the very last thing you see or the very last thing that goes on. And that's really helpful in making sure that you have sort of proportions or things that'll look 
good from far away down first. Because if you've ever painted a portrait, not gotten the, per the proportions right, and just made the, like an eye perfect with rendering, um, you'll realize that you really have to make sure it's good from far away first, or else you're gonna have things in the wrong place. They're gonna look really good up close, but then you'll step back and you'll realize that maybe it's unbalanced or something. So I really recommend working um, in really big sort of marks. So this is one that I pretty much just started. And I started with a brush that was this thick and I just made some marks on every page. And I made marks on every page because I thought, you know, if, if this color is really heavy on the side of the book, I might want there to be at least a bit of the same color on the other side in order to balance it. So that, that's all I was thinking about was a section of color. And then I'll go through and sort of build it up in different ways. Um, this one I incorporated some linoleum printing, um, which you guys are more than welcome to do. I also incorporated some drawing with a, a paint marker. So feel free to bring in whatever materials interest you. Well, I hope you guys are doing all right and I hope you have a good day.